Sweater issue? No, I, actually, oh. I was just on the uh, the phone. I had to call my daughter, my little two-year-old daughter. But uh, oh. um, it, it's important to to recognize here that uh, we have a role to ensure that we work with our partners, the federal government, to deliver the uh, the safe and secure games here in British Columbia. So my role is, is to work with uh, my fellow minister on the federal side and people like that to really set the policy uh, level, be at that that level and uh, at that direction. We leave it up to the ISU, who's uh, um, the RCMP are in charge of the ISU. Those operational decisions are all their decisions, and they make those particular decisions. Does it, does it a bit of a black eye? Doesn't it give the a bit of a black eye if you have what seems to be overzealous police you know, going and talking to people just because of the, of the sweater issue? Well, I'm unaware of that issue, and uh, you know, I, I don't delve into those operational items. Uh, but this particular one uh, that uh, was raised earlier today, um, you know, it, it's the RCMP out there doing their job and uh, trying to ensure that uh, we have a safe and secure game. Thank and trying, you say, you, Minister, you say, Minister, you say, trying, trying to, trying to ensure that we work with groups and respect their rights, and if they want to protest, respect their rights when they actually go out there and, <laughs> and protest. Now, if if people aren't happy with uh, uh, what the RCMP are doing, there are avenues uh, uh, to, to voice their concerns and to complain about the RCMP. Do you think knitters are a security risk? Well, I don't know the situation here, but generally if you're asking me a question, no, knitters aren't a security risk, but you've got to recognize that let's work with these groups. Let's make sure that when we're out there, when we're celebrating the, the, the torch relay, when we're celebrating all of that, we're working with groups so we can recognize the freedom of expression of these particular individuals, and that's what we want to do. Minister, you keep on saying that you're not aware. You keep on saying that you're not aware of the incident, but I mean, haven't you been reading your media clippings? Oh, I wouldn't. I, I, there's, there's an enormous amount of work, as you can imagine, that I have to do. But I wouldn't want to delve into some minute operational side of this. And I leave that up to the experts in the uh, integrated security unit for them to do it. I'm operating at the higher policy. After level. Last question. After introducing Bill Seven in the House. After introducing it in the House, you've now excused yourself from steering it through second reading. Uh, does that mean you now concede that you did have a conflict of interest on that issue? Absolutely not. I introduced that, uh, that piece of correspondence out of an abundance of caution because I believe that this is some very, very critical and needed amendments to the Police Act to ensure that we're able to deal with civilian oversight. In, in a better way than we have in the past. So out of an abundance of caution, I've removed myself from that debate. Now we have to recognize the fact that there's politics being played here, and I want to make sure that that bill gets through the House and pass this session. Why Thank you, you everybody. Thank what? you. Your message to the Cowichan tribes, there's an elder who's blessing the torch. What's the message to them when they're trying to work with you? I think he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I think he's probably heard you. Can we <laughs> Is he coming back? <laughs> <laughs>